Well, I was doing my doctoral research uh, in, the, in my community of Gahnawage, and I was looking at how women in my community express their Kanyakahaga Mohawk identity. And as I was sitting with them, one at a time, and they were doing inter uh, an extended interview with me, a narrative, they would talk about Sky Woman as though she was in the room with us. I thought, okay. I have to revisit that story because there's something there. I had read the version to, that exists in many of the children's books. I'd read it myself, I'd read it to my children. I'd seen murals painted on walls in my community and I thought, okay, what am I seeing here? So I looked for other versions and I thought, there's something missing. I'm not, there's a disconnect. So I sat down and I started writing out all of the different key elements of the story that were similar, right? And then as I did so, I thought, I wonder, I wonder what she's thinking as this is happening to her. So then I started to write in the first person, in her voice. And it just came so naturally to include what the women had told me of their lives into the story. And I began to infuse the retelling of her story with their lives. And it became this process of we are in her and she is in us. So their story was in hers, but she was also in theirs because that's what they talked about in the interviews with me. So it became this very much a living process as I sat down and I rewrote that story. And I also brought my own life and my own experiences as a mother, as a sister and as an auntie into that as well, where in the end, I, I, re I reconnected with her because I began to understand what it, what she was thinking and what she was feeling and what, what that first encounter must have been like as she stepped foot on Turtle Island. And it, it was a very, it's a very powerful moment. And when I perform the story, I feel that exact same feeling every time that she's here, she's in me, because I'm her descendant, right, Al along with the women. We are her descendants. I, I don't, I, it's shifted and changed just slightly, um, because the version in my doctoral thesis, which actually became the basis for my theory and method, um, is slightly different. Uh, because when I perform it now, I had to take out some of that, those statements in there about, well, she did this or that or this, right? So I, be, I put it more in the first person where I did this, and because I'm, I'm telling it from, my, from me, right? From the first person. So it's shifted and changed just slightly, um, but the, the power of it is still there. Well, there's a whole segment um, that takes place in the sky world where it's preparing her as a young woman for her journey down to earth. It also um, sets, begins to set up relate how to have a good relationship. So between a male and a female, between a non-sex based relationship. So between sky woman and her uncle. Um, also relationships between uh, the women of Sky World, and also the the relationship between Sky Woman and her husband, the Keeper of the Tree of Light, which is problematic. It's fraught with problems, but that's what's happening in the Sky World is setting her up for that point where she forgives, which is really important in our Haudenosaunee tradition. Is that we have that very point of forgiveness is paramount. And our ceremonies are all about that, that point of forgiveness and also finding balance that comes out of that. Um, a good mind is what they call it. So this, the, the, the events that take place up there set that and begin that process where then she um, is either pushed, shoved, um, jumps or falls through that hole under the great tree. And so it's also, that's not, what's important about that point is that she comes through. 
the different versions describe her falling, her being pushed or jumping. And I think they characterize different, the different times in which they were written. But that's not the important point here. The po important point is that she came through. And so the next part of her journey, and this is the one that I perform, is her looking around her and wondering what's going to happen to her. And the, the water animals come up, the, the, the birds, the large birds, the heron and the loon, and they come and they, they help her. And then the water animals below give their lives as they dive for soil um, from the very bottom of the ocean floor. And one does succeed, the muskrat, and he places that soil on the turtle being's back and it spreads out in all directions. And then, then she has a place to stand on. And then from there we have her, all of the, the bits and pieces of, uh, of seeds and things that fall from her clothing as she's dancing and thanks and it begins to grow and it, it starts new life and then from there she gives birth and then she's raising her daughter and then her daughter finds herself pregnant from the west wind and then she's she gives birth and dies in childbirth and then the two twins are created and it's then a re it's about a relationship between sky woman and her grandsons and how she's looking after them and, and it's about the how relationships take a lot of work and how you know even Sky Woman can become a little bit side sidelined and sidetracked and how she is treating one twin over the other. But that's what it's teaching us is this is this is human life. Nothing is perfect. And it takes a lot of work to reach balance and be balanced in one's mind. And then the relationship between the twins themselves and how they do the good work of creation all the way to where they're creating other human beings and then their departure from from the world and so it's a, it's there's key elements throughout that um, you know just go, go take you through that process of development and setting us up so that when we go into the peacemakers journey story you understand the foundations of of the guy or oh, the great law of peace that was developed